please join me in the call to worship. Christ is alive. He is risen from the dead. The Holy One calls us to worship and praise. Baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit, we live with Christ in our hearts. Clap your hands and shout to God with loud songs of joy. Sing praises to God who fills the world with forgiveness and grace. morning. As we come together in this time to pass the peace of Christ, I invite us to think about um, where have you sensed God's peace in your life? Maybe it was in uh, the news um, from the CDC recently, or in uh, being outside in nature and getting together with a friend. Uh, one thing that um, I really appreciated was uh, I play tennis with a group of guys, and many of whom are uh, members here. And uh, we initially said we wanted to do chest bumps, you know, during tennis, which we haven't been able to do for a long time, which we don't usually do. But we just uh, shook hands, which was a small thing, but also a very gracious thing. And, and I felt peace and one from that. So I invite you to share that on, uh, on our Facebook comments, and just pass peace wherever you are, in the name of Christ. Amen.
Good morning. It is so good to be with you this morning. Now, today we're going to talk about something called sequences. So rather than try to explain what a sequence is, I'll try to show you. I'll say some things, and then you tell me what you think the next thing is. Are you ready? Okay. One, two, three, four. Right. Okay, here's another one. A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, one more. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes, well done again. So, the fancy word we use to describe things that are in a certain order is called a sequence. You were able to tell me what the next thing is in the sequence, uh, what it was going to be, because you knew the order of the things I was saying, right? Now, there are lots and lots of sequences in life and in the world. Some we know and some we don't know. Well, in today's scripture, Jesus is praying for his disciples. And in that prayer, we hear a sequence you may not know yet. Okay, here's how the sequence goes. First step, God gives words to, his, to Jesus. And then step two, Jesus tells those words to his disciples. Step number three, the disciples then give those words to other people. And you know what? The disciples give step three pretty well. They told stories about Jesus and they shared what Jesus told, said so well that 2,000 years later, we still know a lot of those words that Jesus shared with the disciples. And the disciples went on to tell their disciples, and then those disciples went on to tell their disciples, and so on and so on. So what do you think this means? It means that we and you are part of the sequence that Jesus taught his original 12 disciples. We are all God's disciples, not just the original 12. When we hear Jesus' story, we then go on to tell other people about it. And you can, can do that too. You are part of this sequence. So let's end where we started with you telling me what comes next in this sequence. You ready? God, Jesus, disciples, you and me. Right. And all of us are invited to be in the sequence of sharing the good news of Jesus in God's words with others. Let's pray about this. Dear God, thank you for Jesus who gives you, who received your words and shared them with the disciples, who shared them with other disciples until we received them. Help us to share your words too. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture this, re uh, this morning is from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, verses 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know everything you have given me is from you. 
For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that if you and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the Scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Great job, Chris, on what is not the easiest biblical text to read. Very repetitive. Thank you, Jesus, for that prayer. It's wonderful to be here with you, Grace Church. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, on this holy Sunday that you have given us, we ask that you fill us with the Holy Spirit. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be open and acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Back when I was a young'un, remember we had a, a potluck lunch after church one Sunday. I know Methodist potluck crazy. And we were going downstairs after worship, getting my plate. I don't know why. I didn't sit with my family that day. I sit at this table, looking all spiffy with my little clip-on bow tie. I was a cute kid. And about six or seven of the more elderly women in the church sat at my table, dressed to the nines, brooches, and all of that. And we sat there eating our fried chicken, and I didn't know what to say. I was a shy kid, believe it or not. So I didn't know how to break the ice or what kind of conversation started at this table. Have you all seen the latest episode of Ninja Turtles? What was Raphael thinking? So I sat there quietly until someone else decided to speak. And even all these years later, I remember clear as day, this, this woman clearing her throat <clears throat> and saying these words, God still answers prayer. She said it just like that. This bold statement. God still answers prayer. And she went on to say, I prayed that it would not rain on Thursday so that our Sunday school class could have our picnic. And someone else at the table said, that's true, I remember you praying that it wouldn't rain. It was supposed to, but then it didn't. I didn't say anything. I said we were quietly eating my green bean casserole. But even at that young age, I remember thinking, is that what prayer does? 
That's not a criticism of it not wanting to rain and wanting to have a picnic. That's wonderful. But did, did God alter weather patterns to assure that this picnic could take place? I mean, what happens to the person praying, God, could it rain on Thursday because I need some water for my garden? What does prayer do? We might think that prayer is a little silly. But our prayers are often kind of silly if we're really honest about our prayer life. We tend to pray for the things that we want, whether it's not to rain or whether it's a certain gift we want for Mother's Day or Father's Day or holidays or Christmas or birthdays. One of my favorite movies contains a scene where the main character makes fun of prayer, a very non-religious character because of the events he's suffered in his life. And he kneels down next to someone at one point, wrapped in a prayer shawl, and makes this joke. Dear God, please give me a pony and more money and make me handsome. Mocks this idea of how we often pray for things that we want. And we, while, while, me, we, while we may recognize perhaps the silliness in praying for clear skies, the thought that God spends God's days intervening in weather, and while we may recognize the selfishness of wanting certain things for ourselves and thinking that it's appropriate to ask God for more money or certain toys or gadgets or whatever, What about the prayers where we ask God for something noble out of our faith or even out of our despair? Dear God, please take the cancer out of the bones of my child. If you need someone to die, Lord, please let it be me. But please spare my child whom I know you love. If you have not yet prayed a prayer similar to that one, you will. We all will. Oh, I remember years ago on my knees, tears streaming down my face, praying to God to intervene in the life of someone I love dearly, praying that God would save their life. And it didn't happen. They died. And so what does prayer do if we don't get the things we want from prayer, even when it's noble and good things and sacrificial things? Even when the things we pray for are in line with the Gospels? Do we just pray to check off our faith checklist? Because it's something we are supposed to do? Just a sign of our devotion so that when we get to heaven, we go before God and say, Lord, I know I've screwed up so much, but you can't dock me points from my prayer life. I've prayed six nights a week at least. That's a Hall of Fame percentage. What does prayer do? What are we seeking when we pray? What should we be seeking when we pray? There's an answer to that in our scripture for today. And once again, thank you, Chris, for reading that scripture for us. Understand before we dig in that every book in the Bible is written with a purpose and intention and an audience in mind. We know some of these are histories, some are letters, some are poems. One of the themes of the Gospel of John that I want you to keep in your head whenever you read anything out of John is one of the themes of John is the author is making the argument that Jesus is God. That's why it begins with that strange little opening paragraph. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Logos, it's making this argument to some of the most brilliant thinkers of the day, Greek philosophers, about the nature of Jesus, that Jesus is God. What we see in the Gospel of John is Christ in control, Christ always working to fulfill the purpose and the will and the desire of God. We even see that in a very troubling and confusing part of the prayer read earlier. This one line. Uh, 
I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost. That's referring to Judas. The one destined to be lost. Let's talk about fulfilling the scriptures. I want you to. I want that to trouble you. We're not going to talk about that today. We don't have time. I'm not going to cram two sermons into one. What does that say to us who believe and have faith and free will that Judas was destined to be lost according to this gospel? Stick that in your back pocket. We'll talk about that later. What we're seeing is a God who knows what's coming. A God in control. Christ who knows that the crucifixion, that the passion is coming. And these are the last few hours that Jesus has in this world before horrific suffering begins and then death. Now, if it were me, if I knew that I was going to die, say, Monday night, I would spend the next few hours doing some me things. I would make me the focus, be doing some fun stuff. I'd find a way to watch the Mavericks game tonight. Some of you who are friends on Facebook know I went axe-throwing, if they might do that again. That was fun. I would surround myself with people that I love, eat the food I want to eat, do the things that I want to do. I would definitely skip clergy sessions tomorrow at uh, St. Andrews. <laughs> Jesus knows what's coming. And Jesus does indeed gather his friends around him. Jesus does not make himself the focus. Jesus begins the evening knowing he's going to die begins the evening by getting on his knees and washing the feet of the disciples, including the feet of Judas and Peter, those who are about to betray him. And when that's done, and when Judas leaves, Jesus goes in this long section of Scripture called the Farewell Discourse. Adam read from it last week in his sermon. It's Jesus' final instructions, reiterations of his teachings, the things he wants the disciples to remember before he dies. And a big part of it is assurance that God loves them. And faith that even though anxious and terrible times lie ahead, glory lies beyond that. That what they are going to experience when they see Christ crucified and Christ buried is not the end of the story. Jesus spends his last few hours on earth assuring and loving the disciples and reminding them that our lives do not end in suffering but are made new in resurrection and in glory. And when he is done teaching and assuring and loving, Jesus prays. There's a three-part structure to this prayer, and we've read for the day the second part. It begins with glorifying God, with Jesus saying to God, May I be glorified so that you may be glorified in me. It begins in praise. And then it moves into that section that Chris read, which is Christ praying for the disciples. Notice it's gone from Jesus praying to glorify God to Jesus praying for the disciples. To assuring God the disciples have heard God's word. Asking for protection. Asking that they may be sanctified. What does that mean? That's a fancy word. It means being made holy. To be sanctified is to be made holy. That same Greek word we see for sanctified in our text of the day, we see in the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed, sanctified, holy. In other words, what Jesus is praying is that the disciples become more like God. And what have we just observed about the character of God? That God is a servant down on God's knees washing feet. That God offers assurance and teaching, and love, and even sacrifice, and faith in the glory that is to come, in the resurrection that is to come. And the prayer continues in verse 20. I ask not only on behalf of these, the disciples, but also on behalf 
of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. That we may all be one. Just like Alice was saying a few moments ago. Jesus shifts the prayer not only from the disciples, the beloved people he is with, shifts the prayer to encompass all the world, including us here 2,000 years later. That's how much God loves you. That in the final moments of Christ's life, God prayed for us. I want you to spend this week examining your prayer life. Maybe your prayer tends to be the, hey God, could you please make it not rain? I've got this thing to do. Or God, you know, Father's Day is coming up and I could really use a new set of golf clubs. Would you put that thought in my spouse's head? Or maybe your prayer life is even, God, would you please take this disease away from this person I love? And all of those petitions, as understandable as they are, there is a self-focus. Do this for me. What we see when Jesus prays is a God focus and an other focus, a disciple focus, a world focus. Let's start working today on shifting how we pray to be more like Christ in our prayers. You can use this structure. I'm going to ask that you pray every day this week. Make your prayer life a priority this week so that you get into the habit. It'll just become a priority. It'll just become part of your routine. But for this week, every day, make prayer a priority. Find time to pray. And before you pray, you can pray ineffectively. That's something you can do. Don't. <laughs> think about what you're going to pray and how you're going to pray. And what I mean by that is think about the structure of your prayer. And for this week, let's practice together praying that structure. Open with praise to God. Shift into praying for your beloved people in your life. What I like to do to help with that, I've got this little book. It's my prayer book. And on Sundays, we ask you to send in your prayer requests on our Facebook Live comments. I write them down in here as they come up. Sometimes technology is weird and I miss things. I'll go back and like to make sure I got it all. Throughout the week, when I see a prayer request come up on social media or someone that shares something going on in their life, whether it's like a birth or a new job or, or someone that's hurt or someone that asks for prayers, I write their name down and throughout the week I pray for people by name specifically. Start practicing that. And a good place to start is on Sunday mornings. Write down the prayer requests that are shared today. And throughout the week, be praying for your neighbors who are part of Grace Church. And then, shift your prayer, expand it to cover the world. I'm going to start today by praising God. Then asking difficult questions about what's going on in the Middle East. The terrible suffering we see there. And praying, even though we don't have all the answers, praying for peace. And expanding that to praying for peace for the world. You may pray for a neighbor who has cancer and expand that to cover all people in the world who have cancer and all their loved ones who are suffering. Expand your prayers like Jesus does for us here. Because when you do that, when you decenter yourself from your prayer life and center God and neighbor, what you're going to find is throughout the week you'll be thinking about others. The person you pray for every day, their name will get stuck in your head. The person who's suffering, who's hurting, You'll be thinking about, you know, how can I help? How can I serve them? In their difficult time, how can I assure them? And what we find is what prayer does. Prayer doesn't give us the things that we necessarily want or ask for. Prayer itself sanctifies us as we pray for others. God leads us to be more servant-like in their lives. 
more caring. Even when it's good things. Hey, Adam and Blair are having a baby coming up. Well, Blair's having the baby. Let's keep Adam and Blair in our prayers. And maybe I'll reach out and see if they need anything. How things are going. I'll let them know that we're that I'm praying for them. Anything I can do for them to help. Prayer makes us more servant-like. Prayer makes us more assuring. Prayer makes us more loving. Prayer itself makes us more like God. Prayer sanctifies us. Isn't that better than it not raining one afternoon? Prayer makes us more like God. And so, this week, let us be intentional about our prayer lives. Let us center God and center others. Let us follow up with the thoughts and prayers we have to make them actionable in the world so that others find in us a servant ready to bring assurance and love and care. That in our actions, in our words, and in our prayers, the world may find in us the love of and the servant heart of God. Amen. Come to the time of presenting our gifts, tithes, and offerings to God. And as we do so, uh, we do it electronically um, for the time being. And uh, you can do that on our website on the top right in our navigation menu where it says donate. Um, also, we'll drop a link in um, our uh, Facebook comments. But we invite you to give, not just of your um, finances, but indeed in all that we do, in trying to become a, a, a community that is more focused and centered around living into the concerns that we have in prayer and how that binds us closer as a community um, looking towards the restoration of each other and accordance to that sanctification, accordance to that, that gracious love. I encourage you to give and to give of yourself. Amen.
Let us pray. God, for the gifts that you have given to us, um, that you have recognized within each of us, we give you thanks. May what we have, what we gather, seek to restore, to heal, to mend uh, that which is broken, that which is in need of repair in our communities, in our neighbors, and indeed in our world. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. We're entering into a time of prayers of the people, so there's still time for you to send in any prayer requests you have via the Facebook Live uh, chat, and just remember that our prayer life sanctifies us, connects us to God, and makes us more like God. So let's focus on prayer this week as we go to God in prayer right now. All praise and glory to you, mighty God, who loves us so dearly that you became a servant to serve and teach and love and assure your people. Lord, we are a little bewildered by that sometimes because it is so different from what the world teaches us about power. But as you have taught us in our scripture for the day, we are not to be of this world, but of you. And so we put our hope and our trust and our faith in you as you teach us to love as you love. That is our hope, Lord, that we become more like you because you are worthy. And so we praise you. And we love you because you have taught us to love. And so, Lord, Today, we have many prayers to lift up to you. We pray for Patricia's, Patricia's cousin, Charlie, 11 years old and waiting on a second kidney transplant. And Lord, we know it's not your will that anyone suffers. And yet we also know that suffering exists in the world. We see that in the crucifixion. And so, Lord, we ask that in these unknowable things, why do 11-year-olds ever need a kidney transplant? We, we seek to be the church, to bring love and care to Charlie and to Patricia and to their family, to seek wisdom for the doctors and nurses, and to seek healing as we have faith that your healing exists in and beyond this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, this week we witnessed a train collapse in Mexico City and many deaths there. Lord, we pray for Mexico, for the people, for healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we continue to see COVID-19 ravage the world and especially the country of India. And so, Lord... You have made us see our neighbors not to be the ones who look like us or have the same customs or the same worship as we do, but you and of your love for the world and love for us have made us see all people as our neighbors in you. So, Lord, we give you thanks that you've broken our hearts and broken the world's hearts for the people of India. We lift them up to you, knowing, Lord, that you have given us vaccines and the minds to create them and the resources to distribute them. Give us the hearts to care for each other, something that we have faith you have already done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, this week we pray for all people with an untreated mental illness, giving thanks that you are with them, loving them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give thanks that Sally's cousin Evelyn is out of rehab for her back and is home. And so for that healing journey, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Lord, we lift up Frankie Sittler Elbow today as, as Frankie is transitioning to a new part of her life, uh, graduating, and looks to a bright future. Lord, be with Frankie as she looks for a job and, and a place to live and looks at this new chapter of her life. We are so thankful for Frankie, all that she has meant to this church, and so glad to be able to support her and love her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give you thanks for all the graduates from Perkins School of Theology, where we give thanks that Isabel has worked for so long, and we give thanks for Isabel and for her retirement after many faithful years of service. We give thanks for these graduates as they look to serve you in whatever ministries you call them to. And Lord, we give thanks for the senior graduates of Grace Church. And we ask for your guidance as we continue to make preparations to honor our graduates coming up soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And Lord, we give you thanks for Lauren Sarah Munoz Tremblay as she is starting residency in medical school. May you continue to guide her that she may be your healing hands in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, of course, today we lift up Palestine and Israel. We see the violence taking place in the Middle East. And Lord, I'll admit, I think a lot of us are in the same position. We've tried to study and learn, and it's so complicated and complex that it's mind-boggling and maddening. But it's also very simple, Lord. People are hurting, and people are dying, and people are hurting other people, and killing other people. And so, Lord, we pray for peace, to be a part of your peace. We ask for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your love, that those things you have already given us, that we may bring your peace to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. So, Lord, all these things and the several silent requests that have been made, we lift up to you, knowing that you hear them and receive them. Teach us to expand our prayer life, to care for this world, to care for all. These things we ask as we recite the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Come to the time of celebrating our birthdays and anniversaries, and we start with our birthdays. Uh, this week, Ed Young, Joan Travis, Keith Corey, Maria Cox, and Glenna Gillian have birthdays. Let us pray for them. God, for the gift that you have embedded, knitted within each of us, impressed in unique and diverse ways to create life and how we recognize it in all forms. And when we're able to, recognize that likeness that you created us in, we are grateful. We are grateful for these lives, for Ed, for Joan, for Keith, Maria, and Glenna. We pray this next year they may be strengthened in their faith, help in their travels and their relationships, in their lives as you walk alongside them. We ask a blessing for them this year. Amen. We also have anniversaries this week. Uh, Miss Miss uh, Col- Colleen Preble, hope I'm pronouncing that right, and Adam and Blair Thompson White. That's me and Blair, who's watching at home. So I want to uh, offer a prayer and a blessing for uh, these couples. God, in our world that seems so chaotic at times and so fraught with disconnection, we forget often that depth, that love, that belonging is so close to us. 
And we recognize that in relationship with one another. Give thanks for for Colleen Preble. We pray for them in their marriage, as well as for mine and uh, with Blair and the partnership that she has offered, teaching, uh, encouraging, and nurturing, as I have sought to do as well. We pray for our marriages and our connections and our relationships that we may grow in love that you have embedded within us. We can see that likeness and indeed create a more holistic, kinder, loving kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Church, before I give the benediction, I want to say a couple of things. First off, thank you to everyone for joining us online today and for everyone who is here helping with this service. Carol, for the beautiful music, for sharing the gift of your voice. Thank you so much. Wonderful to see you today. Larry, so thankful that you're able to be here today. God bless you. Mark, for running sound. Great job today. So appreciate you. God bless you. Adam, for the many, many things that you do and for who you are. We give you thanks and so thankful for you and your talents. Alice, what a beautiful children's message. Uh, just wonderful. Thank you so much for reminding not only children, but everyone at Grace that we are called to spread the good word. Chris, thank you so much for serving as our liturgist today for a fantastic job with the uh, duties of liturgists. And, and once again, it's kind of a tongue twisting and difficult text, so fantastic. David, for running our camera and uh, for the video, the visual, thank you so much. Excellent job. And in, in, uh, I think it's getting a little more complex, getting more simplified with the new technology, but way to adjust and just really thankful for you. And of course, Michael, for the brilliant music you give us every week for you sharing your gifts and your graces with this church. We love you and we thank you. Now, some of you, before I, before I give the benediction, um, well, two things, actually. I see that uh, Dr. Frank Rosales is watching. You know, we asked, we prayed for Frank a while back because he had a health scare. And Frank is back home out of the hospital and recovering well. So add Frank to your prayer list and give thanks that Frank has recovered. So such wonderful news, Frank. We're so glad. Um, you're probably wondering what the new CDC guidelines means for grace and for reopening and for what that means when we can come back. I'm going to be honest, right now what we're doing is really compiling all the questions that we need to be asking. We are still planning to reopen on June 13th. If anything changes, we're going to be constantly reevaluating. There's a ton of questions we'll be asking the CDC about social distancing, about masks, about what this means for children who can't get a vaccine yet, and the fact that we're going to have some folks here who can't get the vaccine due to medical reasons. And of course, we want to be able to invite people in who have not yet received the vaccine. So we have a lot to figure out. We're going to get on. We're actually already on it. But we do ask for your patience. We have a timeline for reopening that we're not throwing out, even though we are very excited and happy about this good news that life is starting to return to what we would call normal. Of course, normal has a lot of work to become God's ideal, and we're going to keep focused on that as a church. And that starts by caring for each other, especially the most vulnerable. So be patient, but very soon we'll be able to fill this sanctuary again. And so, church, beloved Grace Church, receive this benediction. Pray this week. Center God and center others, that you may be sanctified for the purpose of glorifying God and serving others and assuring others and, of course, loving others. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.